Now that we know DataView, there's a lot of cool stuff we can do with it, and building our very own movie database is just the first of many to come. In this video, I'll be making the assumption that you know how to work with DataView. If you don't, make sure to watch my previous two videos, one's about YAML and the other's about DataView. Before we get started, all I'm doing is a video illustration of a guide made by Stefan. However, I adapted some of the instructions in his guide to fit my own personal preferences. Stefan, in case you didn't know yet, is the creator of the current most popular theme on Obsidian. It's called the Minimal Theme. He's an active and invaluable member of the Obsidian community. I've placed a link to his guide, where you can find him, and a link to buy him a coffee in the description below. Right about now, some of you watching this might be asking, why even bother with this? Well, for three reasons. The first is that I take notes on the good movies that I watch. I found many times I've made connections between movies and other parts of my vault, especially on documentaries. The second is that you have way more customizability. If you use IMDb, you are stuck with their filters and their parameters. Whereas if you build your own database, you have full liberty to filter and categorize your movies in every way you can think of. The third is privacy and longevity. If you rely on IMDb or any third party to keep your database, you don't own that data and you're fully dependent on that service to keep your information safe. All right, so now let's talk requirements. There's quite a few requirements, but I'll walk you through all of them from beginning to end in the usual mastering Obsidian Vault that we've been using throughout the series. The first thing we need to do is toggle on Obsidian's Templates Core Plugin. So we come here to Settings, Core Plugins, and we're gonna search for Templates, and I have mine already toggled on. I went over the Obsidian Templates in the Templates video. We simply add a Templates folder, so we have ours over here, then you come over here to the Templates Plugin page, and all you need to do is tell it where your templates live. The next requirement is having the DataView plugin installed, which if you're watching this, I'm assuming you already do. Next, we need to add the Quick Ads plugin. So let's just do that. Community Plugins, Browse, Quick Add, Install, and Enable. Next, we need to fetch an OMDB API key. And I've left a link to this in the description. And once you click on it, you're gonna be faced with this website. All you gotta do is press free or Patreon if you wanna contribute and put in an email and name and click submit. And then it's gonna send you an email with your OMDB API key. Keep that handy because you're gonna need that in the next steps of this video. Next, we're gonna need a script. And again, I've left the link to this in the description below taken straight from Stefan's website. And once you click on it, it's gonna look like this. And then you can just save it and title it .gs and I'm gonna put it on this Mac as a placeholder, but it then needs to be moved inside where our Obsidian lives. So for now, I'm gonna save it here. And now I can just bring in my Mastering Obsidian root folder, and I'm gonna create another folder here called Scripts. And I'm gonna place this movies.js file inside the Scripts folder. And lastly, although this isn't a requirement, this workflow works best with Stefan's minimal theme. So I'm gonna install it here as well, come to Appearance, Manage, and yep, it's right here as the number one most downloaded theme. So now we need to create a template for the script to use. This is so that every time we trigger the script, it knows what to look for, such as the movie title, the cast, IMDb rating, etc. Stefan provided us with a sample template, which you can find on his website. I made some modifications to it, and you can find mine on the description below. So we can then copy and paste it into our templates folder. So I'm gonna create a new note here and I'm gonna title it New Movie Template. So now I'm gonna copy and paste my template from my main vault, and we're gonna go over just the small modifications that I made versus Stefan's template in just a moment. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into the Quick Ads plugin page over here on Settings, Quick Add, and I'm gonna manage macros, and I'm gonna give it a name, I'm gonna give it Lookup Movie, and I'm gonna add macro. We can then come here to Configure, then I'm gonna go over here under user scripts, I'm gonna click on it, and it's gonna find the movie script that we added on the requirements chapter of this video. So I'm gonna click on it and then click on add. And now next to it, we see a little cog here. I'm gonna click on it, and now it's gonna ask us for my OMDB API key. So now we can put the API key that we got earlier, and we can close out of this. And now we're gonna click over here on templates, and I'm gonna click on the cog next to it, and we're gonna give it the template path where our new movie template lives. I'm gonna enable file name format and I'm gonna paste this in. You can get this from the description below. All that this means is that the title of the movie you add will also be the file name. And then I'm gonna to toggle on create in folder because I want all my movies to be in the same folder and give this a path. I'm gonna give it movies and press add. And then I'm gonna leave all the rest as default. So now we're gonna exit out of all these pop-ups, come back in here into the quick add settings. And I'm gonna come here to template, change this to macro and then we need to give this a name. I'm just gonna give it add movie, but you can give it whatever you want. Then press add choice, 
and then I'm gonna press the little cog icon and just make sure that over here it says look up movie. If it does, you're good. And lastly, one final step is that we need to toggle on this little lightning bolt icon. This is just so you can use the command palette to run the script. So let's give this a try. I'm gonna press command P for command palette, add movie, and let's add Dune 2021. And it looks like it was just added. So if I come here to the movies, I can see that Dune was added and a bunch of stuff was auto completed. So let's now build our database. I've added five of my favorite movies of the past 10 years and I've added them over here to our movies folder. So I've added Parasite, Prisoners, Shutter Island, The Father and The Invisible Guest, which is a very underrated Spanish movie. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely give it a go. And now let's set up our data view table. I'm going to call mine Favorite Movies. Stefan has provided us with his own sample data view table and I just did some very minor modifications. I'm going to leave both mine and his in the description below. So let's use mine for now. Okay, so this is how my data view query looks like. And there's three differences between mine and Stefan's. Mine is pulling from the movies folder, as you can see here with the quotation marks, as opposed to Stefan's, which pulls from hashtag movies. I did this simply because I don't want to tag my movies, but if that's something you want to do, feel free to use what Stefan did, which is just from hashtag movies. The second change is that I add the genre here. And lastly, I added this little line here where contains status complete. And the reason this makes sense for my workflow is if you come here to my templates into the new movie template, you can see that I added a status variable over here. So if we come back here into our favorite movies page and we go into preview mode, you're not gonna find any results because I haven't yet tagged any of my movies. So in this case, this particular query is looking for the complete status. And because I've seen all of these, I'm just gonna tag them all with complete over here on status. And as I do each one, I come back and I refresh this and now I have the Parasite movie here, which I've completed. So now I'm just gonna do the same for the others. So now if we come back to the database and we refresh it, it's not gonna show every single movie. And you might notice here that our rating is blank because we haven't yet assigned the rating to it. This over here is pulling from IMDb. So we can just go into every movie and give it a rating. So if I come here and add a 10, you can see that our rating has been reflected here. So now you might be thinking, why do I have a status variable on the YAML header? And that's because I like to also have my to watch list over here on Obsidian. So if we copy and paste this data view table from here into to watch list, and I simply change this from complete to to watch, it's not gonna try and pull data from all the movies that have a to watch YAML header. So it's now at a movie that everyone in this world has seen but me, which is everything, everywhere, all at once. So I come here, add, and now it lives over here under the movies folder. I'm gonna click on it, and I'm gonna place the status as to watch. So now when I go on my to watch list, and I refresh it, I have this movie that everyone in the world has seen waiting for me. Okay, so the way I use this is, do I have a movie recommendation? either a friend or just seen it somewhere online. Then I could just come to my vault, add the movie and tag it to watch. And whenever I wanna watch a movie, maybe I come here and browse by genre or rating or director and you get the point. Now let's say I watched the movie and it was already my watch page. Then I simply click on the movie. I change this from to watch to complete. I'll then give it a rating and then I'm taking my notes here. You can also add any prompts that you want to your template over here. So in this case, in our templates, in a new movie template, all we have is just a bunch of YAML headers and then we have a plot. But we can also add a bunch of prompts here. So then when time comes to review it, you know exactly what to write about. And then you can customize this in whatever way you want. So for instance, we can come back here into our new movie template and let's say we add recommended by. And now I'm gonna delete the invisible guest. I'm gonna re-add it. And now it has here a recommended by option. And then you can say that I've recommended it. Seriously, please watch it. And we put the status to watch. And now we come into our to watch list and we add here recommended by. I'm gonna refresh this. And now you have a recommended by column. Now the same way I adapted Stefan's workflow into something that fits me a little better, you're more than welcome to tinker with it into something that fits your needs better. Or if what I have here works for you, then simply use that. You can always change it and adapt it later, which is one of the many beauties of the software. Once again, a massive thanks to Stefan for his work. Go ahead and buy Stefan a coffee. The link to that is in the description below. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.